Hotline Miami, Risk of Rain, Black Ops Zombies, Red Alert, Metal Gear Solid, and Prey are titles that have at least one thing in common. There is more going on than one thinks there is. These games are very immersive because of their polished gameplay, but there is a story happening just behind the scenes, and if you pay enough attention, the game repays you tenfold. At least that's how I feel when I play these games. And Sony belongs into this category, even though it's a Flash game. Join me in taking another look at Sony, a game from 2008 that I could never forget, and probably will never want to. Sony has technology and magic, fantasy with hints of reality, and it's all accompanied by corruption. Zombie hunters that kill anyone trying to find a cure for the zombie condition. Ghosts possessing ancient armors and weapons. Spectres taking on forms of the dead, including you. Secret police fighting against those they swore to protect. Insane doctors performing experiments on prisoners and prison guards alike. A tunnel where your hallucinations can kill you. And a cult that does not care where it's headed and will take everyone else there too. The focus of Sony is a zombie type that keeps its humanity after becoming a zombie, effectively staying human but with zombie strengths without zombie weaknesses. These zombies are created by various groups which do not live long thanks to the involvement of Zombie Pest Control Incorporated, also known as the ZPCI. An organization that pretends to keep everyone safe from zombies, while it secretly works on creating new zombie types and uses zombies as a means to justify its actions and existence. The game itself is a turn-based side-view RPG with tactical elements. It is a tactical game, so for example drastically increasing your speed in a fight gives your side an extra turn, but once the extra speed goes away, enemies get two turns in a row of their own. On regular difficulty there is sometimes a challenge, but on the hardest, planning to win is a must. I recommend the hardest difficulty only once you master the regular. Or, if you have enough patience to keep on redoing a fight through save loading until you've learned all of its turning points. You cannot direct your allies, but you can order them to act in a certain way. Resistances and weaknesses are very important. Enemies have observable behavioral patterns, and more advanced foes have mechanics added into these patterns. Buffs and dispels also play a big role, and so do status effects. Outside of a fight is what Kryn, the developer, calls a roaming mode. You can visit a shop, go for a training fight, advance in a zone's story mode, and inspect the scenery, learning more information about the location and sometimes about the zone's boss or upcoming encounters. Sony revolves around the story of a man who is brought back as a zombie but keeps his humanity. After losing the only living clue to his whereabouts, Louis the Blind, he chases after any information connected with a tape he was given by the blind man. On his journey to find out what he used to be, why is he, and a few others, the way he is, he runs into a few allies, many more enemies, and even more questions. You didn't believe me when I said that the ZPCI's only actions are about zombies, did you? Or why does Sonny not remember anything, unlike those similar to him? How come Veradox is an electrical zombie with healing powers? Felicity is unnaturally fast. Baron Brixius is indestructible. But Sonny is extremely flexible in what he can do. And why is Roald so strong for a human? I have a long version which spoils the game in its entirety, and I could include the bonuses, but I am not one for editing, and this review would not have been finished, ever had I chosen to fully explain the story. The theme of both of the games is captured very well in the soundtracks that I have played to you so far over the course of this review. The first Sony soundtrack focuses on Sony's feelings of loss and confusion. The tracks express unsurety, melancholy, pondering, and the surge of adrenaline when a fight occurs. The second game's soundtrack expresses ramping up of everything. As Sony now has a goal, an ally, and has mastered his condition, answers are within his reach, and both him and his enemies know that the stakes are much higher than they were ever before. However, his enemies are moving to cover these answers as fast as they can. 
By the way, the composer of these soundtracks, David Orr, has a website and a channel of his own where he, from time to time, posts his work. There is also Sony 3. No longer free, no longer flash, but instead a paid game on Steam. Now, I am all for Krim getting money for making a good story, characters, and a game. But Sony 3 deviated heavily from the original art style, and from Steam reviews it would seem that it deviated in other ways as well. It wraps up and explains parts of Sony 1 and Sony 2, but that is what I dislike about it. On one hand, it's continuation of a series that I really like, on the other, it's almost like a different game entirely, and it does not provide the same feeling like it did before. I think that all that was needed was some innovation and a new point of view, while keeping the original art style. Perhaps putting the player into shoes of pre-zombie Brixius, allowing for a whole lot of story expanding, different characters and who knows what else. Because Brixius seems to be around for a very long while. Same goes for Veridux, Roald and Felicity. Now, granted, it wouldn't be just Sony anymore, and I don't know how you, but I would be fine with that. More Sony, while it's actually not Sony, but it is connected to Sony and gives more backstory, more games to play, more mysteries and fun to have. I think that sounds great. Instead, Sony 3 turns to retconning Veridux as a human, and seems to have diminished impact and presence of ZPCI, the one thing that made a great arc enemy because of being ever-present, ever-involved, always willing to fight, and no matter how many heads of this Hydra you would cut, more would take its place. Summarized, Sony was and always will be a big part of both my childhood and adulthood memories. I find it to be of great quality and fun, even to this date, 28th April of 2020, and I would love to see it continue, just not in the art style or the way that Sony 2017 took it. I'm not saying everything about Sony 2017 was bad. For example, more classes seem intriguing, if they really are diverse and aren't just copies like in Sony 1. But the art style, the way that the universe got changed, and Veridux retcon, that's a no from me. If this review got you intrigued, then go on, try it out for yourself. It's free to play after all, no registration required. Although, if you want to reach the secret zones in Sony 2, then an account for saving the required achievements might be of use. If you want to know a heavy cheat code for Sony 1, and a light boost for Sony 2, then stay a while longer. But beware, although it does not destroy your fun in Sony 2, and I think it actually is a must there on high difficulty, in Sony 1, the cheat could break your fun. If you do find Sony 1 to be hard, or happen to be a games journalist, you can give yourself the easy mode. Grab an item, switch to ability screen while holding said item, and click your stats. The item will be turned into extra stats. And about Sony 2, respec after the first fight to get 15 extra attribute points. One of the many reasons why I really liked Sony 2 much more than Sony 1 was, well, as a sequel it was way better than Sony 1. It was more polished, more balanced, you could select the difficulty, the story seemed really nice, and and if Sony 2 was that much better, then Sony 3, like, my expectations were really... I was really looking forward to Sony 3, even though it was nowhere in sight back when I first played it. Sony 2, that is. And so, looking at Sony 2, there was a sense of realism that cemented the whole game together, you know. Like, when I look at the cinematics, what's Sony? Well, Sony is a zombie. What does a zombie do? Well, not much, other than being really resilient and able to take much worse of a beating than a human could before giving out, so... Sony gets run over by a bike? No problem, he just shrugs it off, and the only tracks are the bike tracks of, you know, of him getting run over by a bike. That's the only, only hint you can you can spy on him. It's like some, Veridux has a blade of a knife stuck in his head? No problem, just pull out the handle and keep moving on. It's, it's gonna heal, or not, it doesn't matter. He's a zombie. See, that's, that's the thing. And then Sony 2017 seemed to abandon everything that made Sony 1 and Sony 2 great. The mysterious story? Eh, no mind. 
No, pay no attention to that. That's all explained in here, alright? Forget everything Sony 1 and Sony 2 taught you. Some locations are gone completely and the story is retconned along with some characters. Some characters are gone too. Felicity? Who's that? Never heard of that. Baron or Baron Brixius is from from the unkillable jerk that made for a great villain because he always found a way to get into a position of power and do stuff from it. it is suddenly a caring husband who did all this with good intentions and he just is completely mad and it's like why he the, like some some elements stayed like there is another jerk but He's completely off. He doesn't come off as a jerk. It's just like a bad character. The carbon. It's like, that's not a character. That's just something for Endgame. It doesn't make any sense. Doesn't belong in here. But he put it in anyway. So anyway, Sony 2017 seems like a complete opposite to Sony 1 and Sony 2. And it just doesn't feel as good. It's, it's weak. Very weak. You know, I get that he wanted to make money. And uh, that's why you got like... Sony being able to, no, being able, Sony play being playable on, on Androids, etc. is a thing, and you can watch ads to like get a boost. But is this really the way you want to take your game? Like I get you're a smaller, very very small development studio, maybe like two three people, but maybe if you released it as a fully fledged out PC game instead of a PC slash mobile hybrid with more effort put into it and with a focus or refocus back on Sony 1 and Sony 2 and continuing where Sony 2 left off wouldn't you have made more money? Wouldn't have it ended way better? That's that's what I'm asking myself when I see Sony 2017 and think of what could have been which is what this video is supposed to to point at you know it's less of a review, more of a re-dash view, which is why I named it so, because it's a, me taking a look back at what was, what could have been, and the Sony 2017 part of the review is basically what we got, and there's the sad trombones. So, I don't know, I, maybe if Kryn gets to see this, there's another thing that I, you maybe don't know. Kryn had cancer. It seems that he, he won't know cancer. And I, I was, I'm very glad that he at least didn't forget Sony and that he made t Sony 2017. Because he could have completely abandoned it. I know that a severe illness makes one really think about what they've done and what they haven't and what they want to do for the rest of their life and what's their goals. But anyway, I'm glad Kryn didn't abandon what, you know, what he did before and that he returned to it. I just, I just wish he would do it like he did it before. And there, and therein lies the problem. I'm not sure if he's able to do that anymore. Because I don't know how much has the cancer done. If, indeed, he did go through cancer and it wasn't just fake news, which, well... I don't know. <laughs> I, I would want to think that he did go through cancer because he went radio silent for, what, three years? Four years? Five years, even? And he's gone radio silent again. Who knows why? I think it might be because Sony 2017 wasn't received as well as he thought it could be. I think that one thing that he missed during the hey, let's let's make this let's make this Sony remake and put everything great into it. He didn't talk with many people about it. It's like, "Oh, do you think this would be great?" It's like, "No. I'm putting this in. It's going to be great." Oh. Don't know about that, buddy. It's like the game is in many ways, complete opposite to what it was before. Managing items? Well, and where'd you hear about that? We just upgrade them now. It's, uh... Oh, it's pack animations? Cast animations? No, that was never in here. Hmm, what? When you equip something, it shows up on your character? What the hell? Who taught you all this shit? It's just, no, Sony 2017 was not a good step. I get that it's a step. I get what his situation maybe is, but I wish he would return, you know. I don't say he has to make a Flash game, just make Sony free, but look at what made Sony 1 and 2 great and go off of that. Don't look at Sony 2017 whatsoever. 